So welcome everyone. My name is Natalie from the Grieving Parents Support Network and here with me today is Birgit. And today we're going to talk about healing. Healing after the loss of a child. Um, healing, I think, is quite a loaded topic and the reason I think is behind, behind that is because we have so many different and individual definitions. And I think you, Birgit, also realized that while well, from your support groups. Would you agree? Or Yeah, absolutely. Everybody has a different definition of what healing means. So, yeah. so with that, um, we also welcome your questions or your comments with that. But first of all, um, I would like to encourage yourself to ask yourself, what is healing for you? What does that mean? You know, you must also pay attention to the difference between the noun healing, the healing, or the process, I am healing, and then a state, I am healed. So there's three different connotations to the word healing, which are often implied in people's conversation and also in the conversation that you have um, from yourself. And I think the next point of that is to um, be, be really mindful that these definitions are really personal. They are built by what you have learned from your parents, from your from your upbringing, and they are not set in, in stone. And so people, when they say, um, are, are you doing some healing, or what that meant, what, that, what they expect you to do is totally different from what maybe you need. And the specific things we spoke about just before we came on life is that often healing is put into a bucket of everything that needs healing. So whether it's a physical wound, an emotional wound, and that is, is really difficult if you do that because a cut on your finger might need no attention from you, it might heal all by itself. Um, but if you have a broken leg and that's in an odd shape, it might actually require some healing activities from you. But this is also a completely different thing than when you have emotional healing that is needed, which is, I think, mostly in the case of uh, loss of a child, it is a lot of emotional healing that needs to happen. And the same applies to what is grief and what is grieving, because that is also quite an individual um individual way that people see what that is and also the, the way they're going to ask you a question. For example, if they say, isn't it, isn't it time to move on from your grief? Because they have a certain experience or certain expectation what, grief's, what grief means for them and how long it should take, which says more about what they have learned and less about your process. So we want to really encourage you to look for yourself, to, to make sure that you Pay attention to what it is that you need, that, that you believe it's true, and to try out things. So one of the questions that we often hear um, is, is it possible to heal after the loss of a child? And so we want to make it clear from our experience working with clients and, and you with groups, it is possible to go on the path of healing. Um, but in terms of being healed, that would proclaim that everything is going to be all right. And that is not the case because the loss of a child leaves um, a loss, leaves a hole. There's a, there's a family member missing and that cannot be replaced. Human beings are not replaceable, whether that is by a subsequent child or, or something else. It cannot be replaced. So um, healed, to me, at least to my experience, my current experience is not something that would be suitable to be used in the context of loss of a child. What do you would what would you say, Birgit, with that? Yeah, I'm I'm totally with you. Um, if that is the expectation we have um, from healing, then we will be disappointed. It 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 will not work out. So hmm. and I guess in that as well um, it, if we're using language that proclaims what is going to be for the rest of our lives, um, and usually that happens from a point of despair or, or helplessness, like I will never heal or it will never get better, that usually happens because we're in so, so, so much despair. Um, it's also not really sure whether that's going to be the case. If you don't have the gift of premonition, I don't know what's going to happen for the rest of my life. What I do know is that the death of my child is irreversible. That is not going to change. 
And so that is something that is going to stay with me for the rest of my life. And I think healing... Well, I have to adjust my life to that. Yeah. Because that's nothing I can change. Yeah. And I think with healing, it's, it's the same word. And the metaphor that I often use, and that is, is used which you probably know as well, is the metaphor of a flat tire. So if you have a flat tire and are sitting on the side of the road, um, just waiting for something to happen or for that flat tire to be magically repaired, nothing's really going to happen. What you can do is get outside and flag someone down or call um, help, call for help. And that's the first step of healing a flat tire. But if people say time heals all wounds, and that is not going to happen in the case of an emotional an emotional healing required requiring steps active steps yeah and i can really tell you i have a i i had a conversation with a lady who called me and told me about the death of her child i think it was like 18 or 20 weeks uh in the pregnancy and she said now um the death of my child is um, four or six weeks uh, ago was four or six weeks ago and uh, shouldn't life be normal again now and shouldn't my grief be over and everything should be normal again and <laughs> people really think that 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 they don't have to do anything and then after a couple of weeks or months everything is normal again and um, so I really um and only encourage the people like you did and then tell you healing is a, it's an active thing. Mm. It's nothing uh, that happens by itself. So, yeah. And I think, you know, the, the wording about the time, I think I want to add to that is with time, certain things, th certain things will change. That is a natural progression with time. And um, I know you really want to talk, more about patience, but it, certain things will change over time, but certain things won't change if you don't take an active step. Yeah, I think patience is 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 an important uh, topic. Um, I often, I mean, we all, everybody is usually impatient with everything. Yeah, you know, no, it cannot be fast enough, uh, no matter what it is, and. I experienced the same with grieving parents. So why why is it still um, so painful? And um, why why am I not able to do the things I was be able to do I was able to do before? And why why I'm so tired and and things like that? And then I tell them it's like I mean if you like you said, the broken arm or the broken leg, if you have like a cast and then after six weeks it comes off and then you can see you can move your arm again and, and, and you get uh, physical therapy, that's something you can see what you do. But the the work we do when we grieve, it's something you can't see and even you yourself cannot see it. Not only other people can see it, you also cannot see it. But it's hard work you do every day even though sometimes you just try to to um, hold out the pain you have and nothing else. Hmm. It's hard work. Yeah. And it really takes time and and you need to be the first one who has understanding for yourself. If you don't have understanding for yourself, the others won't do it. It yeah. won't happen for you. You know, they will be impatient with you too. And I yeah. guess the, what, you just reminded me what you were saying. The, the first step in your healing activities is to accept that the loss has happened, accept that you're grieving, that there is this big, big hole, gaping hole, and that you need to find out who you are with that. And when, when Birgit, you were talking, I, rem I was reminded of my situation with my back. I had herniated disc and had a back operation in September. So now at the time when we're shooting this video, it's about seven months. And you know that what they said to me, it takes three to 500 days for that to heal. And with something like that, which is um, um, subsequent hernias, it can take longer. So it's one thing to be patient with a healing, but I take daily act active steps, 
with physiotherapy, mm -hmm. with training, with walking to actually help that. And the same applies to emotional healing. It takes time, patience, and also healing steps. Yes, and sometimes this healing step is just to to allow yourself to feel the emotions you have, to cry, to not be able to do something, to just... I remember that from, from a time... Sometimes I was just only sitting there and, and feeling the pain I had. That all, all, was all I, I could do. But it, in the end, it is helpful to do that, and it is a healing step. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what is important that we don't think healing means we will be become the person we were before. Mm -hmm. Yes, th this is this is so strong what we believe, what we um, experience when we lose a child. We cannot be the person we were before. We will never be the person we were before. And what I experience all the time when I um, support the parents um, that I see that they have to find themselves hmm. in a new way. Yeah. yeah. It's like discovering. It's like an adventure. You know, I tell them most of the time I experience that, that it is the first time uh, parents um, really have to look at themselves and see who they are. Hmm. You know, they were just living their lives and like we all do. And then in a situation like this, you have to come to, who am I? Yeah. yeah. What is important for me? The priorities will change. Yeah. I, I don't know any parent who said after that I have to, I still have the same priorities. Mm -hmm. Priorities get different. I see many, especially women, who changed their job after a loss of a child and things like that. So really give yourself time and discover yourself. What are your needs? Um, which things did you do before what you didn't really like, but you did them because everybody does them or you had a job you never liked, but okay, you got some money there um, and things like that. Often you cannot do them anymore after you lost a child. Yeah. And from what you're saying, I'm reminded that it takes time to grow into that change. Now, yeah. a traumatic life incident, like the loss of a child, will have you change. And it's like an eruption. It's like a like an yeah. earthquake. Yeah. And with the loss of a child, it is an unchosen life change. So, you know, if you, if you go and live abroad or if you change your job, if you have a part of you which has a choice in that, it's a different life change than if you've just been given that... Um, the loss of a child as, as one of your life experiences and you, you don't want that but you have to deal with it and so it's 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 growing into that change and what you were saying about the new normal is is a big thing because we are so used to who we are and then suddenly we experience ourselves different and it takes it takes a lot of time and work yeah and you will experience that the normal patterns you used for different situations before Usually they don't work anymore uh, in a situation after the loss of a child. So you have to create new patterns and new yeah. ways how to deal with certain situations. And yeah, it's really discovering yourself. Sometimes the first time in your life that you really get to know who you are. Mm -hmm. So we have a little... Um a little project that we want to do with all you who listen to this video. We want to actually make a collection of healing activities that are helping you because they are so individual. What helps it? One person might not help another person. So for some people, actually talking about it is really helpful, whereas others not talking about it is more helpful. So yeah. we want to create a list of maybe 101 healing activities that you have noticed have made a change for you. And they can be as simple and as, as as small as taking one minute to be consciously breathing. You know, these are things that actually make small, small, small changes and over time accumulate. 
So we, we will start, we have already a couple of suggestions for you and we will post them with a link so you can go and check them out. Also in the book Surviving My First Year of Child Loss, which is written by 26 parents, there we have a lot of examples of people's first year challenges and how they mastered them. And it's really a beautiful thing to see how sort of simple the things are that they did which helped them. So we want to hear from you. What kind of things have you done or experienced that you, in retrospect, see that has actually helped me? And Birgit, I think you also, from your experience leading groups, you can tell from the benefits that people have when they are part of your group. So you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I really would like to encourage um, everybody to at least take into consideration to um, go to a grieving support group. Um, I often experience when I ask the parents at first if they want to participate, they say, oh, that's nothing for me. I'm not, not, not a big speaker and I don't want to hear all the stories from the other parents and, and stuff like that. But then I, I invite them and say, just come one time and try it. And, and then when you have the feeling that's nothing for me, then it's no problem. You don't have to come anymore. But I can tell you, everybody is staying, uh, especially the, uh, the fathers. Um, they really enjoy having a time where they can talk uh, in a group where everybody understands them. And in talking about what happened and in, uh, talking about our feelings and everything, healing just happens yeah so i can really um i mean a, a, a support group is not something for everybody sometimes the trauma is so huge that you need a therapist or um a grief counselor and and have some some personal sessions to go a little deeper in the things into the things but um, I can see that really these support groups um, can do a lot uh, in the healing process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can attest to that. We have the group called May We All Heal, an online peer support group where parents talk about their situation with each other through the use of the Facebook page. And that has been really beneficial to those people who are actually partaking in that. And there's also lots of healing activities out there you can join. For example, we're starting with Maybe All Heal Again in just a month, which is a month long of healing. And we'll put that link as well underneath. And there is lots of things out there if you start to look for something. And most important is try it out. You know? Yeah, please. Try just it out. Try. Don't say it's nothing for me in advance. You don't know. Just try it and give it a chance. And... It's not a problem if you say, okay, I tried it, but it's nothing for me. But then you can just say, I tried it. And then you really know it's nothing for you. But maybe you discover something that can help you. So we want to thank you all for, for listening. Because given that you've listened to this, this already shows that you've taken action. That you have found us. That you want to be supporting yourself. Maybe you don't know how. But also, if you found this helpful, share it with some of the groups that you're a member of or watch some of the other topics that we've discussed already. And you can find them on grievingparents.net under um, videos. And you can also find them on the YouTube channel. We put links to those underneath here. So if you have any questions, please come back and ask them. We're going to have the conversations um, once a month, depending, sometimes more, sometimes less. And we look forward to your suggestion as well for topics. If you have any questions, um, you can always ask them underneath the post and we'll come back to you and answer them whenever we can. Or you might have other people or some of your peers who have their suggestions for you. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Birgit. I would like to thank you that I that you allow me to serve you and um, to be here to give you some ideas um, from my experience. So it makes me humble to do that. Thank you. And thank you all and have a blessed week and take care of yourself. Bye. Bye.